Thank you to the sponsor for this video, Keen. Visit trykeen.com slash Nadia to get your first 10 minutes for only $1.99 with one of their trusted advisors. I too had a chance to try Keen when I was approached to have them as a sponsor. I loved my reading and I only recommend services I trust. Visit trykeen.com slash Nadia to get your first 10 minutes for only $1.99. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of April 17, 2022. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a remarkable astrological week, without a doubt. Big moves happening in the sky now. Now, let me just say, before I even get started, a lot of this is actually about next week. A lot of what's happening now, I mean, is about next week. Next week is massive. It may just end up being one of the most important weeks of 2022. We have several key moments as part of this year. I'll link to a video that I did looking at the year ahead so that you can uh, explore that a little bit more. But really, next week is so massive that astrologers have been looking forward to it in some cases for years. I know I've been talking about it for at least a couple of years. Next week, we are going to have a eclipse, a solar eclipse happening at the same time that we are going to have the most romantic day of the year, a conjunction of Venus and Jupiter. But this is more, this is at the exaltation point in the sky of Venus. And we are going to have Pluto go retro all at the same time. Neptune is right there with Venus and Jupiter as well. And so we've got this incredible sky right around the corner, but actually we're going to start feeling it now. In fact, I do think that with the sky this week, it is as if in some ways, this is where the universe starts setting the stage, starts putting in the prompts, the invites, the inclinations, the intuitions. This is where we start to get a sense of which way it is that perhaps there could be an avenue with which our blessings may unfold, may come together. And so what do we have here? Well, we have, as we begin the week, Uranus meeting Mercury in the sky. And these two planets are going to get together in the sign of Taurus. This is exactly where we are going to have a solar eclipse next week. And as these two planets get together here, they are going to bring with them fresh insights, new understandings. Keep in mind that one way of conceptualizing Uranus is as a higher octave of Mercury. Now, these two planets getting together, that can be pure thought, new ideas. But there's something else here as well. Um, the other layer to this is that this is happening in the sign of Taurus. And Taurus is, of course, an energy that has to do with the economy. I'll give you an example, something uh, interesting that I've paid attention to lately, been coming across this information. Uh, for those of you who follow me on social media, you know that right now I'm in Ecuador. I'm absolutely in love with Ecuador. Uh, so, so very grateful uh, to have this place to be right now. And some very exciting things I'll be talking about in just a little bit that I'm going to incorporate in this horoscope that I think is uh, valuable to understand the sky right now. And so I'm in Quito, the main city that lots of people come into when they come to Ecuador. And uh, here, uh, I was learning about the, the money, right? Because they use USD, they use American currency. And I asked, like, why is that? And they were talking about how in the year 2000 was really when a lot of things changed, like different currencies around the world uh, were going through ups and downs. And what Ecuador decided to do was align with a more stable currency, which was the American dollar, USD. Um, of course, that was when we had the great conjunction in the sign of Taurus. And uh, I thought that this was so fascinating because I was thinking about how when we think about the energy of Taurus having to do with the economy, well, when Jupiter met Saturn in the sign of Taurus in the year 2000, that really was the, the E economy, right? That was banking, going online, being able to fully bank online um, in a way that we hadn't been able to before. It was this whole new way of understanding even 
commerce and shopping, not just dealing with money itself like we do in banking. I remember um, way back then, <laughs> I had a very dear friend who's passed away now. He was a spiritual mentor to me. His name was Tom John. He was a lovely person. And so Tom John once said to me, anything over a toonie is just a concept. He said that to me. I think it was right around 2002. Uh, he was a mentor to me for about five years from like 2000, 2005, 2006 or so before he passed away. And so what he meant by that is like in Canada, we have a $2 coin and that $2 coin, like the materials that make that coin are probably worth about $2 Canadian. And so what he meant by that was that, okay, yeah, if you have a toonie, you have a $2 coin, yeah, the materials are probably worth about $2, but anything else is just a bunch of numbers on your screen. It's just a concept. And in that way, it's kind of like, it's just an illusion. And I loved conceptualizing and understanding currencies and money in this way. Of course, it doesn't feel like it's just a concept. I understand that for a lot of people, especially when you're in the midst of it and how closely money can be aligned with survival in the psyche of so many people. I completely understand that. But what I found really interesting about this, reflecting on this this week, you know, coming across this notion that, wow, in the year 2000, this whole economy, the currency, went through this massive change. I thought about how um, this idea where we are right now, Uranus going through the energy of Taurus and how this has lent itself to so many changes in the economy, mainly because of cryptocurrencies. I mean, that is very much on the nose for Uranus being in the sign of Taurus, which has to do with not just the economy, but currencies themselves, symbolic of and, and associated with currencies. And so here we are, we're at this moment where we have these two planets together having to do with information, right? And information related to the economy, an understanding of how quickly things can change. But it isn't just that this energy is isolated. If it was just isolated, right? If, if Mercury and Uranus were on their own, hanging out, getting together in the sign of Taurus, I would say, whoa, there's gonna be a bit of a roller coaster. And there might be a little bit of that, but here's the thing, we've got Venus, speaking in harmony with this configuration as we begin the week. And Venus is in the energy of Pisces. And Venus and Pisces, I mean, there's so many layers of exploring that and we'll absolutely do that this week, absolutely next week as well. Um, when Venus is really jacked up <laughs> in the sign of Pisces at her exaltation degree, hand in hand with Jupiter, magnifying her energies, Neptune right there as well. But if we consider that there's this harmonious alignment happening with Venus to this conjunction of Mercury and Uranus, consider how it is that Venus in Pisces brings out her best qualities, her qualities that have to do with trust. That's really a big part of Venus. It has to do with allowing. It has to do with being receptive. The active principle and the receptive principle are both part of our lived experience. They are both part of the creation of the universe itself and the creation of us as human beings. Both need to have a balance in order for us to exist, in order for our lives to exist. There are moments of activity and moments of receptivity. And so here we have Venus in her most allowing, most self-loving mode. She is so in the energy of love right now that it goes beyond just romantic love, although that could be a part of it. Absolutely, that could be a part of it. Venus is the ruling planet of Taurus, the energy that is also associated with sensuality. But she's in the sign of Pisces, which takes it a step further. It's about universal love, but it's also about bliss. 
I spoke about bliss last week, uh, talking about Rumi, and I wasn't sure if I remember to say, because I, I know that I talked about a closeness with God associated with intoxication. That's part of what Rumi uh, explored. But he also explored physical intimacy as describing a closeness with um, divine intimacy as symbolic of being so close to the creator that you feel it on the same level of physicality. And it's interesting because there are many ways of understanding how it is that and why it is that we are motivated to connect with other people, especially on a level of intimacy. There's so many layers of our psychology and so many philosophical layers to that. And I think one big part of it, one very big part of it is acceptance. It's really what it comes down to, to know that we can truly be spiritually, emotionally, psychologically bare to another person and still be accepted is symbolic of the type of bliss and love that we seek in a higher sense as well. I'm reminded of uh, Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud. So Carl Jung, both, both Freud and Jung, right, very influential figures in helping us to understand the human psyche. Jung was for a time a student of Freud and they had uh, several areas of contention, but one of their really big areas of contention was that Freud believed, at least early in his career, in the first part of his career, he said that everything we do was for libido. Everything we do is because we want to, we have an instinct, an urge to procreate. And so whatever we go about achieving or you know, wanting to understand, wanting to learn, it's because on some level deep within our psyche, we think this is going to make us attractive to the kinds of people that we would like to um, merge with physically. And Jung believed and asserted that what he's calling libido ultimately is a desire to merge with the divine. It is a desire for a spiritual experience that is on the other side of where libido is taking us. And that if we only think of it as libido, then we will end up stagnating our ultimate growth. We'll end up stagnating our full potential. And so this was an area of contention because Sigmund Freud was an atheist and he couldn't relate to that part of Carl Jung that was very guided towards spiritual understanding, had a desire to bring spiritual understanding into established academic fields, which he could never really do um, because there was hostility to it. And because of that, he went on to, and his students went on to create uh, these institutes all around the world where his work continues to be taught and it is taught in universities as well in some forums. That's a very simplistic way of putting it, but yes, that's it in a nutshell, their relationship. And so I thought about how with this energy this week, we've got the sensuality of Taurian energy, but that Taurian energy has this energy that almost stands in contrast to sensuality, which is all mind and thought and ideas. Sensuality exists embodied. It exists in the earthly plane, which doesn't always connect with air, with intellect, at least symbolically speaking. And yet Venus is also ruler of the sign of Libra, where we recently had a full moon late last week which is an air sign, which is about connection, one-on-one -on -one connections with another person. It is about, when you think about the energy of Libra, right, what partnership means, it means sitting and facing another person right in front of you, one-on-one, -on -one, looking into their eyes, looking into their face, seeing them, and knowing that you are seen. Now, there is a very immediate way that that's done, that's very Libra, and then there's a more profound way seeing through the person, merging with the person. That's a much more scorpionic way of doing it. 
and we are going to have an eclipse in the sign of Scorpio <laughs> coming up next month as well. So we're going to get a chance to understand all these different layers. But at least for now, to understand Venus and Pisces as love as bliss, love as being completely open to the journey and the process and completely receptive. And then imagine this energy of receptivity, right? Of, of really like sort of floating on the ocean. <laughs> That's Venus and enjoying every moment of it, enjoying the feeling of all the waves of the water on the skin as you float on the surface of the sea. And then that energy coming in touch with or getting in touch with something that seems next level, something that seems like a leap into the future. And that happens through ideas, that happens through mind. Well, I think many of us are going to be having these types of experiences now. The types of experiences where we have a desire to transcend all of the outer planets have to do with transcendence in some way or another. All of the outer planets, and I'm talking about Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. All of these planets in their own way represent um, a more karmic energy, a more faded energy. They're an energy that speaks to us moving beyond the limitations of what we thought it meant to be human. Because with each of these planets being discovered, leaps in human consciousness, leaps in our understanding of our potential took place as well simultaneously. And so we have here an energy, Venus and Pisces is all bliss, all receptivity. And she is receiving support from an energy of transcending the limitations of the past, transcending what we knew ourselves to be before. And that is a collective journey, yes, but that's also a highly individual journey. What does a more evolved, mutually respecting form of love look like? And where is it that we can allow that to happen more? And so there's absolutely a romantic connotation here, without a doubt. If it was just, like I said, if it was just Mercury and Uranus connecting with each other, I would say, oh, there might be some you know, ups and downs taking place in the economy. But because we have that supportive element of Venus and Pisces, I think that's gonna help dissipate some of the more erratic energy that could play out at the beginning of the week. And instead, it's going to invite us to understand this energy more personally, more emotionally, to understand what we value more personally, but also to leap forward into something new, into something else, and to be better for it, to understand what acceptance means and to be changed by acceptance as well. I'm reminded of, uh, this might be an example that's better suited for next week, but I wanted to share it so badly. Um, there is a, um, a show that you can stream on HBO Max and other platforms depending on where you are in the world, but HBO Max in, uh, is in many, many countries now. And it's called Search Party, okay? And all of the seasons, I think there's four or five seasons, you can watch all of them if you want over the course of a couple of days. Um, and so here's a spoiler alert. Please be on the lookout. Here's a spoiler alert. If you haven't seen it yet and you don't want the spoiler alert, season five. Well, let me summarize. Girl is kind of crazy, <laughs> right? And there's this theme that plays out throughout the show, but then it really crystallizes in the last season. And it's this idea that she has a thought, she has a vision, right? Here's the spoiler. She has a vision. Um, and she thinks she needs to save the world from an outcome that she is seeing. But then as a result of her own actions, she ends up creating the circumstances that she thought she had to save the world from. I thought that this was so intriguing. And in some ways it was foreshadowed in earlier seasons as well. It was foreshadowed again and again that this is the type of person that this could be with that imagination, but also that, that heightened sense of self. Um, self-trust is very valuable. Self-trust is a beautiful thing, but 
where it is that we think we have the answer, where it is that we think we have the truth, where we get very carried away in that truth, we may end up creating more pain through our good intentions. I remember uh, traveling through Thailand in 2016 and 2017. So I took two trips to Thailand. I went there in 2016. I loved it so much. I wanted to go back and I made it part of a tour that I did over the summer of a few different countries and cities in uh, Southeast Asia. And so I remember when I was in Thailand, they had this Ask a Monk booth and I asked the monk, I said, what do you do if, this is way back then, before I saw Search Party, I said, what do you do if, you know, you have the best of intentions, the person has the best of intentions, right? They think they're doing the good thing, but because of what they do, they end up creating suffering in other beings. What happens to that person's karma? And he, the monk was like, I know he didn't anticipate this question. He was like, that is a question that we have been dealing with for many millennia. And I, I thought that was the perfect answer because that is a part of the human experience is that so often many of us think that we're doing something good, but actually may end up creating pain. And some of us are more conscious of the process than others. And so it's fascinating to me now that we are at a place where we are on this precipice, right? Next week, it just really goes into overdrive. But as we start the week, we're on this precipice of belief and faith and bliss and wanting to do good and having so much compassion and feeling so much. But then also being invited to step up our awareness, step up our consciousness, being invited to reconfigure our relationship to the practical world, right? Just like Tom John. Tom John said, anything over a toonie is just a concept. Well, what does that mean? And where does love fit into that? Where does a spirit of universal abundance fit into that for us? And then what happens? Well, we get to Monday. <laughs> so far, we're just at the beginning of the week. And we get to Monday, and what happens? The sun square Pluto. Dun, dun, right? Uh, those of you who are students of astrology, you get it. This is a very serious energy. Now, the sun does square Pluto uh, once every, well, six months or so. And so we get this about twice a year. Of course, the sun will be in different signs, and then Pluto will spend a good long time in a certain sign. But then, yeah, that can change too. And so it's not always in the same areas, but this time what we have is the sun in the sign of Aries at the very end of the sign of Aries with Pluto stationary. Remember that Pluto is standing still in the sky this week, next week going retrograde, standing still in the sky at the height of its power, as close to the earth as it's going to get, sending the sun energy of tension. And the sun being in the sign of Aries, well, the energy of Aries can be very impulsive. It's very pure, too. It's a very pure energy. It's a very impulsive energy as well. And so we have our impulse, our drive, our most immediate instinct, receiving this energy of, on the one hand, determined transformation, digging for the truth. But because it's a square because it's a conversation of tension, we may need to ask more questions before we take action, especially the action that we are being encouraged to take. A lot of people, even the most loving people, the most seemingly loving people, remember, this is the world that we've created. Like I was talking about earlier, the active principle and the receptive principle. And part of the active principle means that part of the active energy can sometimes be anger. My Aunt Shireen, who you've seen on my uh, channel many times, she talks about how anger is a spiritual energy because it provides, in many ancient traditions, it provides fuel for change. It can be the spark that we need, the impetus that we need to launch ourselves in new directions. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes anger is a part of that. And so anger can be sacred. And so 
that can look different for different people. For some people, anger means externalizing the energy. Well, this happened and the fear, the fear around taking responsibility means that the focus has to be on another. But at the same time, where it is that we're able to find balance, where it is that we're able to say, wow, this happened and I feel provoked. What is my truth in this? And where am I going to direct this energy? Well, that becomes part of the exploration. That becomes part of how we elevate the energy of Pluto square the sun. But I do think that collectively we'll see different examples of this. We'll see, and we always see this, right? We see people using an energy collectively on the world stage or on the pop culture stage. People will use an energy in a way that is more uh, conscious, more elevated, right? The conscious elevated part of this energy says, know thyself, know thyself. And whatever impetus comes, whatever buttons get pushed, allow that to lead you to a deeper truth of what's being pushed within you and where it is that that learning is leading you as part of your unique journey. The unconscious way of using this energy is Stimuli and response. The stimuli could be a sense that things aren't fair. Someone's not being fair. Structures are not fair. And yeah, that could be the case, of course. And so within that, how do we own our power within that? There are different ways of expressing our power, of using our power. How are we going to do that? I will say this, with that individual impulse being so strong, being fed by that Pluto, but Pluto is in the sign of Capricorn, the sign of power. And so power structures in that, if you think back, right, when Pluto was square Uranus, way back, the beginning of the last decade, in the first part of the last decade, yeah, we saw lots of social movements pop up, which was wonderful, and there was some progress made. But in the larger scale, in many ways, power asserted itself and was able to reign over the impulse of the people. That doesn't always work that way, but we saw that example quite a bit. And we still see some of that. And we may see some of that with this energy. More personally, in our own lives, we'll have to be conscious of the stimuli of our responses so that we can feel good about ourselves on the other side of it. That's key. That's where self-knowledge and consciousness comes in. And sometimes feeling good about yourself means saying something. Sometimes feeling good about yourself means sticking to your vision, asserting yourself, choosing not to believe lies. And sometimes it means acceptance. Your circumstances are going to be uniquely your own, but we may very well see examples of this play out for us collectively as well. Now, the following day on Tuesday, that's when the sun changes signs and the sun is going to move into the sign of Taurus. This is very exciting. <laughs> the sun moving into the sign of Taurus. Really, this is setting the stage. It's like day after day, step after step, just like Taurus does, right? Just very, very diligent energy. will diligently move towards the eclipse that will happen next week. And so the sun goes into the sign of Taurus right around this time every year, and it brings with it an energy that can be very embodied, very sensual, or very focused on practical matters, right? Focused on understanding prosperity. It's different this year. <laughs> it's different because we have the North Node right now moving through the sign of Taurus, which means that we are going to have, of course, eclipses in the sign of Taurus and the opposite sign with the south node in Scorpio. That's a big defining characteristic of 2022. And now here we are. We get this big eclipse, solar eclipse next week. And so this energy of Taurus is going to just accelerate. It's going to be highlighted that much more. Now, if you want to understand what that eclipse means for you, and I know it's coming up a little bit, but look, it's next week, monthly horoscopes on YouTube for the month of April on my channel. I explore that for all the signs out there for each of the different videos. 
And so this is the big energy, but I also think this is like a shift that very quickly transforms the energy of the square between the sun and Pluto and transforming that energy very quickly. We're able to step into something different. We're able to step into something new. Find resolution of that square very quickly where the tension and the frustration is. We're able to find that resolution as well. I wanted to share. I, uh, being in Ecuador right now, I've had incredible experiences so far. I've met the most incredible people. I feel such a strong connection to this country, uh, to the spirituality. It is incredible. I cannot even begin. I've touched a little bit on it on my Instagram and in Facebook, but it is a very powerful space. So we had last week's Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, and as part of that conjunction, I really felt very strongly that I wanted to see a proper uh, shaman, a proper shaman rooted in Incan indigenous wisdom and tradition. And so I'd met somebody who'd helped me out a whole lot. He's an amazing person named Mateo. If you need a tour guide or someone to drive you around when you are in Quito, Ecuador, hit me up. I'm happy to share his contact with you. He's an amazing, knowledgeable person. And so I, I said to him, I want to see a shaman. That was like one of the first things I had said to him. And he's taken me on a few different tours so far. And he said, okay, I know where to take you. I'll take you out there. So we drove about something like four hours outside of Quito. And we go into the Amazon, right? We're at the entrance of the Amazon. We go into that beginning part of the Amazon rainforest, the very beginning, the Amazon jungle. And there, there is an indigenous community there. And they welcome people. And they're like, you know, doing education and things. And there's a shaman there. And it was just a very rich and wonderful experience to understand uh, the indigenous communities rooted in um, Inca wisdom. And so, yes, I had a, a shamanic purification ritual. Like Jupiter conjunct Neptune was pretty much exact. Like I remember we were not far away from the village. We were approaching the entrance and I got that notification on my phone that said, Jupiter conjunct Neptune right now. So that was really exciting. And so um, there I am. I'm getting this ritual. And you know, that's the thing with these rituals is that they're never what you think they're going to be. And they never have the outcomes you think they're going to have. And so you go in and you think purification is one thing, right? And you, you think about all the signs have their own sense of purity. That Aries energy, that's what I felt. I went in there for the bliss of Jupiter conjunct Neptune in Pisces. Like, let me merge with God. And what happened? I was brought right into my own drive, my own passions, my own desire, my own determination. It was such an interesting contrast to me, but I saw how there's this interconnection. All the signs are ultimately connected to each other. And so, yes, we have this strong Piscean energy right now, this blissful energy with all of us. All of us in some way are feeling like we're in a dream come true. We're caught up, right, in a pink cloud in at least one area of life. Just about everybody out there I know feels that they're caught up in a pink cloud or they're realizing that the cloud they've been in hasn't been a cloud at all. They need something more authentic to find that bliss. And by authentic, I mean... It has not the escapist tendency that Piscean energy can sometimes have. But it's incredible, you know, as part of the mystery and as part of how all the signs are connected, you're brought to what you need. And I think that's part of any ceremony that you may decide to participate in. And so this experience was fascinating to me in how it is that it invited me to consider that we can be having our intention. We can be having a pathway that we decide we are going to take to fulfill a particular intention. And yet, sometimes the universe has a higher wisdom. And as part of our unique journey, we find our way to that intention in ways that are not always as straightforward. I was looking for Pisces. I was looking for bliss. And in the process, I found that so many of the other signs represent their own forms of bliss as well. 
What I love about this week for us, well, there's so much here. It's a very powerful celestial time. I do think that this week in powerful and meaningful ways will set the stage for truly big breakthroughs that are coming up right around the corner. And by that, I mean next week. Next week, what we're building towards will perfect. We will have that much more bliss, but we are also going to have very quick embodiment as well. We're going to be invited to consider where our spirituality is lived or not and how it is that we can find that right balance of embodying the principles that we hold to be true. It's not always an easy journey. Sometimes it's messy. I mean, I'm thinking about that sun square Pluto. Oh boy, a lot of us are going to feel stirred, feel our buttons getting pushed. And yet that is part of the process as well towards authentic purification, allowing ourselves to get in touch with those very deep things that hold resistance can be one very powerful way to break free and break through that resistance towards a more authentic sense of self, which is ultimately what the universe is aiming towards. If you look at the planets, if you look at, as I was talking about earlier, the outer planets, the outer planets represent leaps in human consciousness as they were discovered. We understood what it meant to be human differently than we did before. Eclipses work kind of the same way too. They invite us to take a leap in consciousness, to trust, to go in new directions. And that can be part of the fun and part of the wisdom as well. Living in alignment with the stars and the universe ultimately is one very powerful way of making your life truly your own. And this is going to be one such moment now. Inviting you to move forward, to create momentum, and to create happiness in the process. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And to prove it to you, here are some of my most recent favorite comments. Thank you to everybody who likes, who comments, who subscribes, who shares, who thumbs up. All of it means so much. Who hits the notification bell? Thank you for that. And if you'd like to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShawSuperstars.com where you can get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week for each and every sign for as low as just $3 a month with Choose Your Membership Rate. Higher tiers get you things like all access passes to Synchronicity University events, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Synchronicity University has some incredible classes happening this spring and this summer that I think you will absolutely love. Classes with me are on right now, and I hope that you're enjoying them. And we have the one and only Melissa Sanova coming up. Choose your tuition rate on now for Melissa Sanova for just two weeks left. This is a best-selling author on magic, teaching us magic. Kitchen Table Magic uh, is the name of her book, and based on her book, she's bringing a five-part course to Synchronicity University, the one and only, the very popular Melissa Sanova. Now, you can choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class, for another two weeks and classes start in May. It's all very thorough. It's also a whole lot of fun as well to learn from Melissa Sanova. And so visit synchronicityuniversity.com, see what you're gonna learn and sign up. Link is in the description below. Synchronicity University presents the one and only Achuta Bhava Das, presenting the mystical roots of ancient astrology and introduction. This is an incredible, five-part course taught only at Synchronicity University, and it is Choose Your Tuition Rate on right now for a limited time. Of course, Achuta is a superstar on YouTube, uh, has an incredible following there, and I just think he's one of the best astrologers out there. I'm so proud to have him at Synchronicity University. And so, yes, there are five classes here, and they're very thorough. They look at the mystical roots, but they also help you to understand the chart from that mystical roots perspective, the signs, the houses, the planets, and so much more. And so please do check it out at synchronicityuniversity.com. Link is in the description below. You can learn more about the class and sign up now 
while you can choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class at synchronicityuniversity.com. Synchronicity University presents Mark Lawrenson of the Sydney School of Astrology, presenting your soul's mission in the birth chart, a five-week course that is choose your tuition rate on now for as low as just $5 a class to learn from the incredible Mark Lawrenson. Now, Mark Lawrenson taught at Synchronicity University before. I thought he was so brilliant. I remember uh, just interviewing him and getting so much out of just the interview and the wisdom that he shared there, seeing my chart differently. I think that he is so good at what he does, helping us to understand the chart more thoroughly, more from that soul perspective as well. Uh, and as a result of that, I mean, he has this incredibly successful, renowned school, the Sydney School of Astrology. And so he's bringing those skills for as low as just $5 a class at synchronicityuniversity.com. So again, Choose Your Attrition Rate is on right now. So go to synchronicityuniversity.com, learn more about these classes, get excited about the classes, sign up, and we will see you in class for the one and only Mark Lawrenson, synchronicityuniversity.com. Live events are back. I cannot believe it. I am so excited. Live events are back and I am going to be at the one and only, the renowned, the legendary Norwalk Conference out of Seattle, Washington. And that is at the end of May. And so I'm actually doing two talks and a keynote as part of that uh, whole conference event. Some of the most incredible astrologers alive today are going to be there participating in that event as well. Now you can join the talks, you can join uh, day schedules, you can meet all some of your favorite uh, astrologers out there, but also you can get consultations with me as well as part of my week in Seattle. And so if you'd like to learn more about the Norwalk Conference, I will link to that below. If you would like to inquire and set up a consultation with me while I'm in Seattle, Washington, well, you can go to my website and use the contact form there at NadiaShaw.com. I am so ready. <laughs> I am so ready for live events. I can't wait. I can't wait to hug whoever wants to hug me out there in Seattle, Washington. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So please do join us for the NORAC conference and links are in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you to everybody who follows me on social media for sharing my journey while I'm here in Ecuador, before I was in Ecuador, while I was in Peru. And let's see where the road takes me next. I just know I got to go home at some point <laughs> and I got to go home before I can go to Norwalk. So these are the things I know for sure. But uh, for now, here I am and I'm loving it. And if you happen to be in Ecuador, uh, use the contact form on my site. I would love to meet you for a hug or a coffee. Uh, it's wonderful to connect with friends and fans and superstars and students and fellow astrologers out here and wherever I go on my travels. I appreciate you guys so much. So thank you. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy. Welcome to the exciting rebirth of Superstar featuring Choose Your Membership Rate as low as just $3 a month. At Superstar, you get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, class passes for Synchronicity University, consultations with me, and so much more. All of this in the Superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there.